So the second they introduced the villain of this movie, right away, I was like, I know that guy. Who, who is that? Where do I know him from? Who is that man? And where do I know him from? Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Terry Potter's fucking cousin. Fucking cousin Dudley. Cousin Dudley. Fuck that guy. He sucked in Harry Potter and he sucks in this. After I recognized that that was Cousin Dudley from Harry Potter, I did a little research and I just saw a headline of an article. I didn't actually read the article because why would I do that? But he was talking about how he was proud to do his own stunts in this movie. What fucking stunts do you do, dude? Fucking little bitch. The Old Guard is about a team of immortal warriors led by Charlize Theron, and throughout history, they try to do good things? Yeah. Anyway, there's a new member that gets added to the team, and while she's discovering what it's like to be an immortal, the team is getting hunted down by bad people that want to do bad science on them. Unethical villains that want to do some unethical science. Yeah, it's whatever. Charlize Theron is the only big name in this movie. Her character is old as fuck, like thousands of years old, and she's just trying to train the new girl while also dealing with some shit that she's never dealt with before. I gotta say, Charlize is what's up in this movie. I loved her, she was great. She gave a top-notch performance, per usual, and she was also awesome in her action scenes. They must have paid her very well, because she clearly gave a shit. And her giving a shit made me give a shit, and I was on board the whole movie. Kiki Lane is the new girl. She just discovered that she can't die. So while her entire life is being turned upside down, she's also being forced to be on this super team of immortals. The best part about her character is that the script doesn't have her go through conventional methods that we typically see with her type of character, you know? They don't use her to introduce us to the rest of the team. And we don't really follow her as the main protagonist. She's just kind of along for the ride. She's got her own role. She's got her own story arc. But she's also got a very interesting perspective. She's not okay with being on this team. And even though she knows that she will outlive her family, she understands that she still has a lot of time she can spend with them. So she has this conflicted motivation, and I was down for it. I don't think I've seen Kiki in anything before, but uh, she did a good job. Good performance. Bravo. There's some other characters in this movie that are a little bit cliche, and you can kind of tell what's going to happen with those characters. But I just have to talk about these two dudes. Straight up. They're like, yeah, we're immortal. We're on a badass team of killers. And yeah, we're together. And we've been in love for hundreds of years. There's a scene where one dude declares his love for the other dude, and it has to go down in the history books as one of the most romantic things ever said. No fucking joke relationship goals right there. Uh, yeah. I'd say watch it. It's pretty good for the most part. It is based off a comic book series. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Graphic novel. And that means there's probably some good reference material, so that's always good to hear. I was a big fan of the action and the idea and the concept behind this movie. When it wasn't being conventional with very specific movie tropes, I really liked it. There's a few things in here that I honestly thought were great, but they have a tendency to fall back on cliche shit, and when that happened, I got annoyed. The villain in this movie, Harry Potter's cousin, is as basic as it gets. He's a fucking evil corporation guy that wants money and power. He just sucks. There's no good motivation there. Fucking sucks. For a Netflix movie, it's good. Not as good as Extraction, but still very entertaining. For me though, personally, this movie suffers from X-Men Origins Wolverine Syndrome. You remember in the opening credits sequence of X-Men Origins Wolverine when Wolverine and Sabretooth are shown fighting in every major war for the last 200 years? It's the best three minute sequence of that whole fucking movie. They're showing awesome characters do crazy shit throughout history. This movie gave me flashbacks of that. I cared more about cool flashbacks historically 
than the current story in the movie. I want to see these characters doing some shit in the Middle Ages and throughout history. Give me some Game of Thrones shit. There's a small snippet where Charlize Theron's like, I was actually worshipped as a god once. <laughs> uh, hold, hold up, excuse me? I want to know that story. I want to see that shit. And that leads me to the question that I bring up every once in a while. Why is this movie not a series? You've got characters that are genuinely interesting, that have lived for hundreds or thousands of years. Take the time to make a series covering these stories of these characters throughout the centuries. I think that would be fucking awesome, and I would watch the shit out of that. What we got was a pretty good movie with some cliche shit and some pretty cool shit that was just kind of a big waste of potential. I do recommend you watch it, though. It's pretty cool. It's on Netflix. It's whatever. Okay? See ya. Subscribe! Oi, who's that man? Where do I know him from? <laughs> Oi, who is that man and where do I know him from? Who is that man and where do I know him from?